Hello, this is Matt Bischoff with Failure Bikes and Rad Like Dad. I'm here to give you some exclusive content for the new website, wehavemotive.com. Super psyched to be a part of it. My man Keith Trainer, I used to look up to that dude back in the day. He used to ride for SM, watching all the old videos. Keith's an awesome dude. And today, I'm going to show you some exclusive stuff. I'm going to get you some insight on some of my favorite bikes from my bicycle collection as well as some old footage of Matt Hoffman trying some crazy stuff in 1992 and just showing you some stuff of the newly launched Rad Like Dad. But before that, I'm going to show you a web edit that's got some never seen before footage of me from back in the day, maybe from like 1992 to, I don't know, 1998. So check out this little compilation of riding footage and enjoy the video.
Hey, this is Matt Bischoff. I'm in my backyard, AKA the Failure Compound. I kind of wanted to share with you some of my uh, favorite bikes that I have. I started off street riding back when street riding was invented and R.L. Osborne came up with the uh, bully bike with the bash guard. And uh, I had this same bike back when I started street riding and I loved it. Although I kept breaking a lot of the frames like up here and, and back there, frames weren't made as well obviously back then as they are today. But uh, I ended up trading a guy, a failure, Nate Wessel, brand new frame for this used bully frame so I could rebuild up kind of a, a bike like I used to ride when I first started riding. So I have a 44 tooth Dirt Brothers sprocket, this uh, Hoffman Super Fork Skyway Tough 2. This bike's heavy as hell, but it gives you kind of an appreciation when you ride it around of how things used to be. But uh, I love this bike, it's one of my favorite bikes. Moving on, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I'm building up this complete bike with some, some old parts I have laying around. This is a, a bike that Jay Miron rode, and Jay Miron personally sent me this frame. It is a uh, prototype Schwinn torque flight that Jay was riding and testing out. And I would say maybe, I don't know, mid 90s, 96, 97 maybe, is when uh, Jay sent me this bike. And uh, this frame weighs, I don't know, eight or nine pounds for just a frame. It's like beefy as hell and the dropouts are, you know, new school kids would probably laugh if they saw these dropouts. But this is when, you know, bikes were crappily made and then companies started like overbuilding bikes like this Schwinn Torque Flight. But this thing's bomb proof. It's kind of like the DKSOB and bikes like that that were tanks, but they were indestructible. The thing is though, even a bike as heavy as this, Dave Asato and different people were doing bunny hop tail whips. So when kids today complain about needing a bike that's sub 20 pounds or low 20s, and they're complaining, oh, my bike's heavy. It's like, if you held a frame like this, you would maybe respect like how heavy bikes used to be. Moving on to a bike that I'm never gonna ride. I built this bike up so I can give it to my son rider one day. This is a failure made in the USA, Jeremiah Smith signature frame, the Flying Lion. And uh, I had it all powder coated like Buzz Lightyear. So my friend Brian Swinford at Kinks and Links, or Links and Kinks, powder coated this bike for me. I wanted to basically make a bike that was a Buzz Lightyear color theme. So it's all custom. It's all snafu parts and failure parts. And uh, like I said, it's brakeless and very light compared to some of the older bikes. But I just kind of want to share some of my bike collection with you guys kind of through the ages of from, you know, late 80s, mid 90s to the uh, current year. So hope you dig it. I remember my graduation present in 1992 from high school. My mom bought me a plane ticket to go out to Matt Hoffman's to visit Matt Hoffman, Rick Thorne, Steve Swope, and Psycho, Davin Halford. I went out there for about two weeks and it was pretty awesome being able to ride Matt Hoffman's personal indoor warehouse. He had a mini ramp and a vert ramp and hang out with all those dudes. It was an amazing experience. And uh, I have some rare footage that I want to show you guys. It's uh, Matt Hoffman. Before there was foam pits, before there was resi, Matt Hoffman just learned stuff the hard way and just went for it on his ramp. So this is a, a little clip I want to share with you guys of Matt Hoffman trying a 540 tail whip on vert in uh, summer of 1992. Check it out. <laughs> 
I wanted to share with you a brand new thing, the brainchild of my wife Tessa Bischoff. She had an idea to do baby, toddler, and kids, BMX clothing, bikes, safety equipment for kids. We're in a generation where people like me are having kids and we want to get kids on bikes at an earlier age and have them be able to wear the same kind of shirts that their dad wears. So we got exclusive licensing with all the major BMX brands. We got Shadow, Subrosa, s &M, Fit, Odyssey, Standard, Failure, the list goes on with many more to come. We teamed up with Nate Wessel and his wife to make Rad Like Dad a reality. So you can check it out at radlikedad.com or on Facebook, facebook.com slash radlikedad. As you can see, this is my son Ryder, he's five years old. The Shadow Conspiracy is one of the brands we have on board. Cannon is modeling his sick failure shirt. And Ryder, do a death metal growl for the audience out there. <coughs> That's right. And Ryder, no. what is your favorite death BMX man. bike video that we always watch? Agro Man. Can you say something from Agro Man? Like, what does he say? I am an evil ninja. <laughs> <laughs>